Paula from the Princess Grace Irish Library here in Monaco, and I'm delighted to welcome back to the library Mary McGorkian, film producer and director, who is down in Monaco for the Monaco Streaming Film Festival that's to start kicking off tomorrow. So Mary, welcome back. We're delighted and you're here to talk a little bit about your film, The Bridge of San Luis Rey, a remake, and it's based on the um, Thornton Wilder's classic Pulsar winning novel. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to do the remake 18 years later? Well, um, it, it is in fact a remake. So, so Thornton Wilder wrote the novel in 2000, oh, 1927. So it's coming up to a hundred years. Um, it's a great American classic. I, uh, it has been, it, and, and, and it won the Pulitzer Prize, as you pointed out, um, in, in 1927. Um, and there were then subsequently three films made of it. And you're probably wondering why does an Irish female film director come up with the Bridge of Sandy's Way? It, it came to me very early in, in my life as in theater, um, in, a, in a circuitous way. Uh, I had been in when I was still a young student actress in a production of Brian Friel's Lovers and Winners. And as you might recall, in the, in the Winners play, there's a young uh, Donegal factory girl character I was playing that character I think and at some point in the play she says like flies to wanton boys are we to the gods they kill us for their sport and being a very facetious and now I cringe when I think about it but we were very lucky because Judy Friel Brian Friel's daughter was involved I think she was directing the play and he always went to see it or sent somebody from his family to see every production of all of his plays so he came to see this particular production and he came into the little dressing room in Players in Trinity afterwards. And I did do that cringy thing of saying, I don't think my character would say that. And he said, say what? And I said, like flies to wanton boys or we to the gods, they kill us for their sport. And he went, hmm. And he didn't say anything else. And then sometime later, as, as I was starting to sc write screenplays, it was put to him, you know, there, there was kind of an ongoing debate because he was very against, he was very unhappy, if you recall, with Philadelphia, Here I Come, when it was translated to film. And around the time that Dancing at Lunas, it was a huge success, it, they really wanted it to be a movie and he was, he was resisting it. And I managed, for various reasons, was having a conversation with him and I said, do you really, you know, and, and it was that, you know, understandable view that he had that literature was is the lang is the format of words and of language and that film is is a visual format and that really the two do, they don't translate and i said is there are there no exceptions and he said well you know you're young you should try adapting something that might have a visual possibility and and i said so you're saying that there are some exceptions and he just went hmm again and about a month later, his daughter, Judy, turned up on my doorstep. And I'm in my early 20s and knocked on the door and handed this. She handed me this brown paper bag. And she said, my dad said to give you this. And I opened it. And in it was a copy of The Bridge of San Luis Ray by Thornton Wilder, a very old thumbed copy. And I had not read this book. And when I opened it, there was, there was in the front of it, he'd written in pencil, maybe this might work. Wow. And then there was a, a, and then when I flicked it, it's quite a short, beautiful novella in five chapters. There was a big triangle turned up at the end of the first chapter. And the triangle hit the line, which is the last line of the first chapter, like flies to wanton boys or we to the gods, they kill us for their sport. So I read it. And it is a very, very beautiful piece of writing. It's an American classic. It's probably way out of my league, but I just, thought I'd, as an exercise, I'd try and adapt it. Because when I looked at, there had been three films before in the 1930s, there'd been a silent film, mm -hmm. then a Baudet production in the 1930s and another in 1947, and subsequently, I think even a, a, an American teleplay. And so I just did it as an exercise. Years That's and years amazing. Later. But you rose to a, a challenge by Brian Freel. Yeah. It's quite amazing yeah. that that is the background to it. Yeah, it may never have been made by you otherwise. No, no, it absolutely wouldn't have. I yeah. wouldn't have known the novel. I would have had no reason. And, and it yeah. really would never have been made, except that then it kind of came back into fashion, if you remember, during, which is why it's interesting that it's the Monaco um, Streaming Festival now with Sherry Blair as the keynote speaker. And it was her husband, 
Tony Blair at the time in at the, the 9-11, um, uh, he was the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom at that time, and he was apparently, the story goes, he was going to the United uh, to Washington to speak uh, on behalf of the British people who had died in 9-11 at Camp Fitzgerald and all of that. And apparently, on the story goes, that on the way over, on the plane, the American Bush administration got onto him and said, can we see your speech? Uh, and they had a look at it and they censored it. And they said, he had put apparently quote, very nice quotes from the Quran. They said, not appropriate, we don't want those. Oh, come up with nice. something else. yeah nice. so on the plane apparently his speech writer came up with the very famous last few lines of the bridge of San Jose and he quoted it at this ceremony and so this book while it had never been out of print suddenly was at the top you know what is the bridge of San Jose and everybody bought attention it. yeah yeah Fabulous. and at that point that script that I'd written 10 years before was floating around a few agencies in Los Angeles and they just went up and suddenly it, it was kind of a hot property and it found itself in the blacklist and they went off you go you know um uh, who do you want in the cast which is how i ended up with this extraordinary group of actors i know tell us a, a, a couple of the names uh, throw them out there just uh, amazing it, 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 i don't think you'd ever get to do it again really it would be an amazing cast and an amazing crew and it's an ensemble cast of of iconic american actors so robert de niro harvey Keitel, um uh, f murray abraham kathy bates who to me is phenomenal um and then a, a, you know a group of 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 you know, fun, it became a wonderful international cast and an amazing international crew so you really nice. wouldn't get to do that movie again yeah, um, and of course the the Irish uh, as well, Jim Sheridan yeah. and uh, yes, Jim Sheridan. playing King of Spain and Gabriel yeah. Byrne. Yeah, so so it was it was an incredible opportunity that then sadly had a, you know went the way that some films sometimes do. I was probably too young. It was probably too much for me, and the film basically got taken off me. And the interesting thing is, I remember when I went to adapt it. I did a very uh, um, kind of true adaptation. I remember asking Brian Friel, you know, what do you think? You know, how should I approach it? Because all the other films had taken one or two characters. This is a massive ensemble piece. He said, you, he didn't say trick, but let's say he said, you trick with Thornton Wilder's structure at your peril. He actually used an expletive instead of trick, but anyway. And, uh, and so I didn't trick and it was in the five chapters. But when the producers saw it, they just they took they they basically recut it into a chronological order, which wrecked the film. Ah. So it was a really tough thing to have happen. And I always promised that I would try and get the rights back and put it back into the order that it was meant to be in. And in, in the end, what's happened is because of COVID, we had all this time. Uh, we managed to do a massive job. We re, we recut it significantly brought back in all the old footage, remastered it, reformatted it, brought it into the digital space and, and rescored it with the, wow. with the composer. Actually, he'll be there in, in Monaco. Oh, right, for the previews. Yeah. So this, that's yeah. absolutely fantastic. So you, you've achieved all of that in, in uh, quite tight timing then, if it was during the COVID time. Yeah. Well, it, we, oh, listen, it went on for years, getting the yeah. rights and sorting it out and doing all of that. Stuff. Okay, it's, yeah. It's a years long project. But because there was, a, you know, kind of that period during COVID when you could kind of do post-production, we were able to, okay. it was quite difficult to finish it from a technical point of view. So we were, people were able to really focus on it and the wonderful people at Windmill in Ireland um, spent the whole of COVID like frame by frame, cleaning it, reformatting wow. it, putting it, con uh, it, it was uh, conforming it. It was a really complex technical piece of work. Yes. And so they had the time and they were able to do it. And um, so that was fabulous, actually, to be in Dublin doing that during COVID. That's great. And now yeah. I mean, the Monaco Streaming Film Festival is only in its second edition. So it's it's really a prestigious thing for you to be invited to have uh, your film as one of the special screening events. Um, and and it's, the, it's a preview, actually, before the U.S., release in two weeks is, am i right yeah it's a streaming release so it makes sense because now it's in the digital format and it's fantastic yeah. that they're doing it. i know there have been film and television festivals before but it is quite unique to recognize that the world is mostly consuming its content through streaming as we know 
So for them to create this dedicated festival, which also has an industry market side to it, but is, is presenting a number of films. Um, so it, make, it made complete sense to, to give it a little st you know, streaming festival outlet just two weeks before yeah. it's released across North America on all streaming platforms. So that's, that's the way it works. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And then after the US uh, screening, uh, after it's sorry, streamed, yeah. will then come to Europe, is it? When, when... Uh, yes, it's a different company that has for Europe. Okay. So I think we're waiting to see how we get on in America because it's an American novel and an American cast, essentially. Yeah, so exactly. I think we want the US first ah, and right. then the company has it for the rest of the world. So we'll see what happens. So basically, um, our, anyone listening here in Europe should come to your screening. Um, yes, in Monaco. Yes. Wednesday in Monaco. And it's on at six o'clock. And it's uh, approximately two hour uh, long uh, film. Yeah. So yeah. they can, uh, we'll, we'll put the website where they can uh, get tickets and, uh, and see you there. That's absolutely fantastic. Cool. Yes, 6, 6 p.m. Grimaldi yeah. Forum. At the Grimaldi in Farm Monaco. In, in Monaco, yeah. exactly. And Monaco's we're also awesome. going to be partaking in uh, a talk with uh, an, another Irish producer, Victoria Swerford. Is yeah, that there, there are a number of Irish people attending. As you know, I think you, 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 you're speaking with Michael Flackley, I think, who's, who's a great supporter mm -hmm. of the event. And the wonderful Victoria Smurfett is in town as well, doing uh, a number of panels. So, yeah, so we're, three we're, very big names in the in the movie industry are there uh, representing Ireland. That's absolutely fantastic. A few Irish, a few Irish showing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah can, are, are you yeah. going to be uh, walking up uh, the uh, steps with Robert De Niro on your arm, or no? <laughs> <laughs> He's not making an appearance. Are, okay. They know it. They know it's happening, which is great. <laughs> So fantastic. I'm very all the cats. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Mary. What a great achievement. Uh, and uh, we wish you all the best and luck. And I'll see you on Wednesday. The see you there. That'll okay. be fabulous. Great. Brilliant. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Mary. Thank you so much. Take care. Take Bye. care. You too.